got it. Make sure it's streaming live on here and then, then we can get to it. So you could connect, you could connect this with Facebook, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and we are live and direct on Facebook with yours truly, Young Cortez, on the side of us. Welcome back to Get Straight To It podcast. Thank y'all for yes, tuning in. Uh, VIC, don't be cutting up in the comments today. <laughs> Hey, VIC, uh, don't be coming on here playing, boy. So we we here live, man. Let's get into prayer right quick. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We glorify your holy name. We ask that you open up the ears and the hearts of those that need to receive this, Father God, that be impacted by this, Father God. We ask that right now we come against anything right now in the name of Jesus, any kind of distraction, any kind of things that are coming against the airways, Father God, to try to keep this podcast from moving forward. Father God, we thank you for Young Cortez, it's time right now, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over himself, over myself, over his house and my house. And Father, we thank you and glorify your, your name for this divine opportunity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're not going to the camera, bro. All right. Oh, the first mountain function. It's all good. It's all good. Amateurs. Yo, the enemy. Right, we, got, we got three on here. We got cool. I see you watching, bro. Shout out to cool. Cool. What's happening, cool? We got the world rejects in the building. Hold on, let me let me get this oh, situated. Good. Take two like seconds. Go back there. Technical difficulties. Yeah, man, it happens. No good. It happens to the best of us. All right, we do, we do, we do. So. We could just get straight to the testimony, bro, on, on what brought you to Christ. And then we go from there. All right. That's going to be, uh, I'm going to make a real long story short because I know that sometimes people can kind of like drag their testimony. Oh, good. You know so good. But uh, for me on a personal level, I got introduced to Christ at a real, I don't want to say a real young age. I just want to say like, I think I remember I was like 17, 18. So I guess you can consider that young, right? Yeah. Um, so I was around that age. I would say uh, young only because you weren't able to get into most of the stuff as an adult. You know what I'm saying? So I'd say yeah. Yeah, but I still had a lot of growing from that point on. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I had a lot of like falls and God picked me up, of course. So, but during that time, I know that like because like I already knew I knew God like yeah. since from the jump because my grandmother, she's diehard Catholic okay so I was traditionally raised as a Catholic right so I knew all the traditional ways I, I knew you know um you know the first communion um to me and not to down talk on, on Catholics but at the time I just wasn't into it yeah it didn't really catch my attention it didn't have my full attention it wasn't until like I was you know in my teenager uh days um, me and my cousin are first generation Christians. Yeah. So she, she her name is Jessica Pacheco. Shout she out. really introduced me to, to Christ because I remember going to a youth event. I didn't even want to go. I remember being crazy, like super high at the time. I was, all I wanted to do was get high, smoke weed, hang out with my boys. That's it. Those were my priorities at the time. And she invited me to this youth night thing at, at, a, at a local church. And um, long story short, I decided to go. I'm glad I went because when I tell you, it was the first time I've ever experienced what people call the Holy Spirit with people, um, what I thought was always just kind of like, a, not a lie, but a, just kind of like a sham. Like it, yeah. didn't, it didn't register to me. And um, I felt his presence so heavy that night because I gave myself to Christ. And the, I remember the, um, the pastor that night, the youth pastor was like, anybody that wants to give their life to Christ, you don't have to wait. You can do that now. Like, you can come to the altar. You can give yourself to, to Christ. And um, I was like, I remember being like nervous, super nervous. 
didn't know what was going on, but I knew I, I felt God and I, I felt his presence and I, I was overwhelmed and I was like, man, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just give my heart to God and, I'm, and I just submitted. I remember being there at the altar, my hands up, raised, give him, I bawling, crying out. Didn't even know why I was crying. I was just crying. Well, and and um, yeah, man. So it happened uh, so fast though, but it, it, it was a move of God that I'm glad that it happened kind of early on in my life versus being later because I was a little bit of a runt, bro. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cap. Like I was, I was pretty, I was pretty young and dumb, like for the most part, made a lot of big mistakes. And and I know for a fact without Christ, without God being so early in my that's why I feel like it's so important. That's why I have a big heart for the youth yeah. and for the young adults, because you catch them at a young age, you minister to them while they're early on because the enemy knows exactly how to capture a young mind and manipulate them Yeah, Come on, to, because they're not to down talk, but as younger people, younger children, younger kids, they're naive. Right. They're naive. Let's just be real. Right. I was naive. I was. And um, I feel like it's important. It's a huge deal for the, the OGs, the, the young, the older dudes that are, kind of like more experienced with Christ to minister to the youth, their children, um, bring them up like that. Um, just to kind of avoid all that, the mistakes right. that we made in our life, right? Yeah. So they can so know I'm, there, I'm, there's another way out here other than the way that... Exactly, yeah. because um, I'm glad that I got ministered to a young age. I, uh, thank God, you know, he used my cousin to um, open that door for me to, to, to walk in and really know who Christ is because I just knew of God. I didn't truly know him until I stepped in and right. started to read the word, open my heart, give him more access to my life. And then boom, it was just more of like, a, like God just took the will. You know, I know that sounds super cliche, <laughs> but, but God really took the will, bro. Yeah. So you know, back, back before you found Christ, were you doing music then too, or it was just something when you came into Christ? Yeah, so I've always had an ear for music. I've always loved it. I remember being like super young in middle school, high school, rapping in the back of the bus. You know what I mean? Freestyling. You know how everybody at the lunch table just beat, you know, beating with their pencils and everybody yeah. freestyling. So, yeah, but I never had it like never took it serious at all. It was always just on some freestyle type stuff, you know. He, I was just raised around a whole bunch of um, dudes that just loved to rap, bro. And it just pro it progressed. It got bigger. God used that talent that I had and, you know, to use it for him. Just so people can know, though, you got the rockets on your head, but you're from Dallas, huh? So you, you grew up out there, huh? Born and raised Dallas, Texas, my whole life. Um, you know, so that's where I grew up. That's where I was raised. Uh, but as far as Houston goes, I moved to Houston about five years ago. That's, that's when I met my wife. Um, shout out V Marie. Um, we met at a church. That's another story though, but you know, I'm always gonna have Dallas in my heart. That's why I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. And I still got a, I still get a lot of like, you know, people just mess with me about that. So Even five years more, ago is when you became a Texans fan, huh? Never, <laughs> never, bro, never, and, and I never will. But I, I mean, I rock with Houston, bro, because I've always did. Even, yeah. even living in Dallas, bro. Um, you know, I tell my partners this all the time, and they ask me, you know, how is it in Dallas and things of that nature. But I always let them know, like, bro, I've always rocked with Houston. I've always, I always loved coming over here, hanging out. I've always had partners here in the H. It was like my second home, I guess, if you yeah. will. So, yeah. So we got one question already in the comments. They want to know where you got your shirt from, bro. The shirt? Oh, Chosen. Go holler at the homie uh, Cas Castro. You can go hit his uh, his Facebook. You know what I mean? Uh, Joseph, his first name, Castro. Go hit him up. He, uh, he got all the apparel. He got, I got a lot more shirts that he made for me. It, that's the... Uh, the perks of being cool with Kaz because he gives me free uh 
free gear, free oh, merch. Oh man, I must not be that cool with him though. I'm, I'm still on the bench now. You know, but I, I <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> hey, look, he'll show me a picture. Actually, he blessed me with this, but he'll show me a picture of like, hey, I got a new design coming, and I always hit him with that. Hey, I need that. Man, and, so um, before before coming to before coming to Houston, what? What kind of ventures were you on out there? Did, were you releasing any CHH music out there or not? For sure. Yeah, that's kind of where it started. Okay. That's where it was rooted at, actually. I started making music over there. Started kind of getting a buzz, if you will. Started making a lot more music. That's where I kind of got my feet wet. And um, okay. yeah, so it was a blessing. You know, God kind of opened that door. So being in the, you, you've been in since about, what, about 2015, 2016? So what, did, have you came up to any obstacles as far as being burnt out? Like, man, I'm not doing music no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, any obstacles come up as far as your walk like that? Yeah, most definitely. And I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. A lot of people that have been in the, in the game, if you will, like just, you know, or just in ministry in general, not just rapping, but just in ministry can kind of get burnt out. They, um, but it's always important to, to surround yourself with soldiers, Come on. Um, with brothers in Christ, to kind of help you, guide you, push you, rekindle that flame when it goes out. I feel like it's important to have accountability. Come on now. You know, people that's gonna like, not only just tell you what you want to hear, but really get on you about certain things and push you, motivate you. And that's what the rejects do for me now. Um, Oh, and I had that back in Dallas, too. I'm not going to say that I didn't. Um, I had a lot of training, um, but there was a lot of falling. You know, God had to, you know, let me fall sometimes to have a true understanding of what it is to get back up. You know what so I mean? When, when God came back knocking, you laid it down for a little while. God came back yeah. knocking and said, man, it's time to get up. You know what I'm saying? What, what made you come back with the rejects? Like, you know what I'm saying? You were like, I'm finna pick it back up. And, and yeah, I laid it down for a few years. I, I was in a sabbatical. Um, Come on so, so, so I feel like the sabbatical for me was important and it was uh, very necessary because it was healing that needed to be involved in my heart mm -hmm. and in my spirit because I feel like healing is important um, for anybody in any situation. Uh, but for me on a personal level, I had to heal from these wounds, bro. I had to heal from certain things that I made. I dug myself in a hole. I made mistakes that led up to, to certain situations. And it caused me to, I guess, have a downfall. And that's what made me realize like, oh, okay, hold on. Let me take, let me hit the brakes real quick. And let me just chill. And then and I always think it's gonna be on my time. Like, oh God, I'm gonna I'm a chill out for six months or just a few months and ended up being for two years, bro. Wow. So during that chill moment, did you ever see yourself coming back to music? Or did you say Yeah, that? yeah, I did. Yeah. I did because I love music, bro. Music is always going to be a part of my heart. Um, whether I completely lay it down, take a break, it don't matter. I just feel like in some way, shape or form, I feel like music is always going to be a part of me. And um, whether I'm doing music personally um, or not, I'm always going to try to influence and try to like make an impact um, in that, in that area. You know what I mean? So when, when you say impact, that, that, that I like that word, that impact, because I see your music is different from a lot of music, especially what you think, you know what I'm saying? You, you tatted it up, you dress different so that what, what's yeah. inspired, what, what inspires you to make music like that for the, for the CHH community? Meaning, you know, cause people do look at, I'd say CHH a certain way, you know what I mean? Cause I guess we're not supposed to wear snapbacks and t-shirts. We're supposed to be suit and tie. Hey, what you so, think, man? Christian couldn't ride clean. Uh, post up on the block with the whole team. Come on now. That's that what is. inspired it. That's what that yeah. song was kind of based off of because people do get this perception of Christians to be straight up corny, just Come dudes on, that um that just don't have fun, don't have no type of life outside of church. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but you know what? That 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 perception is based off of experience and how people experience other Christians. Yeah. And um, I heard a pastor say this one time and it always stuck with me. He said people aren't denying Christ. They're denying Christians. 
And, and I was like, wow, bro, that's crazy. Because people are looking, they're observing, they're watching all the time, bro. Yeah. And so I wanted to give a different outlook with music from my personal use and just show people like, bro, you ain't gotta be corny all the time. Not to say that, not to say that, oh, a certain genre of music is corny or not. I'm not here to point out nobody. Right. But for me, Cortez, I know how I wanted to aim with my music. I wanted to sound a certain way. I wanted it to be uh, all Christ-led and just God opened that door for me. And I'm glad that I got with the rejects because <clears throat> they're nowhere near corny, bro. Shout out rejects. Shout out rejects, man, because like that's what really, um, you know, kind of like brought my attention to them. Yeah, because they they weren't like everybody else. They weren't like your your typical Bible thumper, um, straight. You know. Yeah. They made they made music for the church, but they made music for the street the, for the right. streets. So it was like a mix of both, and I loved it, bro. And you know, I'm inspired by it. always says, engaging without compromising. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the thing that stands out about, about the rejects is that y'all get in the trenches. You know what I'm saying? And I know Stro yeah. always say he, you know what I'm saying, he's a homeboy. But Stro really, he, he ministers to me in my ear about, you know what I'm saying, we really got to be out here doing this. You can't just be somebody that's talking about it because people are watching. You know what I'm saying? And uh, They're always watching. Now, I, lis I listened to an interview you did with uh, Let's Chop It Up, you say you had to overcome depression, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people yep. are still stuck in, in that. How did, how did you come out of that, bro? Because I Prayer. see your music, your music, bro, touches a lot of people, man, in a lot of ways that are struggling, especially people that, you know, put you on, they put people on your music when they're, they got God's pulling on their heart and you, you plant that seed, man. So how'd you come out of that? Well, I mean, I know the significant breakthrough for me was always prayer. Um, just being able to rely on that prayer and have faith in that prayer. Because ultimately, bro, when nobody else is around, it's just going to be you and God. Right. When, when, when the homie can't pick up his phone, when he don't answer your text, that's why it's important for us to really have that strong relationship with God because at the end of the day, bro, can't nobody, can't nobody help you but you. Right. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, bro. I think it's important to have brothers and sisters in Christ help us, guide us, um, pray for us. But we should always have the mindset of building that altar for ourselves with just us and God. Get in that prayer closet, that one-on-one -on -one time, that communion with God, and really just use that. So that was the only weapon that I had when I was facing depression, when I was facing anxiety, when I didn't want to live, bro, when I was contemplating suicide, when there was moments where I was so weak, I didn't know how to get through it. So the only thing that I had was prayer. And I remember being in, alone in the restroom sometimes, just lost, bro, not knowing what to do. And the only thing that I had was God. It was just him and that, that prayer. And so those moments, bro, I feel like were significant in my life. They were the only reason why I even felt breakthrough in my life because of prayer. Prayer is essential. Prayer is what's going to get you through. And your faith ultimately behind your prayer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, when, when you do music, you can feel that passion in, in that music, like I told you. There's a lot of songs that I know there's it's your hook, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to ASAP Preach on, on the song that y'all got together, When I Am Weak, because that song right there, yes. I'm going through a season right now that, man, I got, there's, there's at least three times a day I'm listening to that song. Because like you said, when you're by yourself, that's when your mind gets the, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And when, yeah. when I'm by myself, I really got to put on some, some music that's going to help me through that. Like I was telling you before the interview, a lot of your songs minister to me. And, and I've been seeing a lot of people say the same thing, bro. I know Kool-Aid said on the last interview that song Time you got. And then I, I watched right. over from uh, Dallas. I think his name is Halo. I think that's his name, right? Shout out to homie Halo. Angel Segura. Okay, yeah. He, he yeah, said his real name is Angel, but his, his, his artist name is, is Halo. So now, a uh, next question I got is, 
when you because I'm not saying you got a huge fan base, but there's a lot of people that that look at you. You know what I'm saying? So how do you? I got a huge fan base, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you separate the to? You know what I'm saying? Because for up and coming artists, how do you separate the humbleness to to that pride? You know what I'm saying? The humility. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think that's important because I used to face the opposite of that. I used to be so so arrogant, bro. You know, my head was this big. Even though my head is big now, my head was this big. <laughs> no, I'm not playing with you, bro. Like my, like mentally, my head was. I was so arrogant, so cocky, and uh, God used a, a few things to humble me and um, made me realize and just sit me down. Um, and now I, I view it a whole different way, bro. Um, one of the tactics that I use on a personal level, and I'm gonna just give you an example. Yeah. I'm at a show. It happened recently, actually. I was doing a, a concert in Waco with um, with brother uh, Lucky Luciano, and right off, I guess right after we got off stage and everything, you know, a few people walked up to to him asking for pictures. They asked me for pictures, whatever you you know. And uh, one asked me for an autograph. Now I don't get them much, but when I yeah. do get them. I like to present them at a, at a certain way. So like when he asked me for the autograph, I was like, cool, I'll give you the autograph, bro, but you gotta let me pray for you afterwards. Yeah. So, so, so people like don't really find the time to really do that. I feel like it's important, bro, to kind of like open that door for them to have prayer and, and fellowship, bro. Um, so yeah, that's one way I really just kind of aim at, at humbling myself and keeping myself in check you know what I mean because I don't want to be that person I was you know back in 2016 and and uh and just let that I, I don't even want to call it fame I because it's a you know I just want to say I guess the attention right you know when you get certain attention it kind of goes to your head and, and it, you know and you can let it lead you a certain way but me I like to keep myself in check and just remind myself that I'm a servant of God Right. before anything you know what i mean and i know that, that god can take away this gift in a vapor so so i'm I'm just gonna put it out there for all y'all that are watching on the 29th i'm asking everybody for an autograph i'm gonna have a big old poster board come on getting all the autographs dog that's it come on <laughs> i got a hey i got a prayer team hey <laughs> see i'm asking for autographs from everybody <laughs> i got a prayer team i got a prayer team me fire pass yeah, Who's gonna it. be out there? I'm the permanent market too. No excuses. So Ooh, you're gonna get this Holy Ghost. <laughs> so fast forward, you know what I'm saying? Where you're at now? What for any up and coming artist? What would you tell them, bro? That is stuck in that situation of 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 being in a depression mode and wanting to let go of music. And what what would you? What kind of encouragement would you give them? For for people that that are in depression. Yeah. And, and that want that are like actively in music. Yes, yes. That that are, are have reached that point in life where they're giving everything up. Like that's it, bro. I'm not gonna do it no more. I'm not gonna say his name. I know a brother of mine. It's close to me. He's dealing with that right now, and um, I'll keep his name confidential. But I will say this: what I told him, I said, bro, no matter what you do, music or not. Keep God centered in your life, bro, because that's ultimately going to be the most thing, the most reliable source that you have in this world, bro. Right. Because once you're plugged in with God, the scripture says that, you know, when you have a strong foundation, when you seek the kingdom of God first, right. that everything else will be added unto you. So those that scripture speaks volumes, bro. We should always keep the kingdom of God first. When we put God and apply that first in any type of situation, not just in music, but in our life daily, then we'll begin to uh, see like a clear picture of what God really intends for our life. And I think he'll give us discernment. I think he'll give us tools to know whether or not we should continue doing music or not. And that right there alone will defeat the, the oppression, the depression in any type of um, thing that you may be going in any situation. That's what helped me. I kept God first, bro. Keep, keep him first. And uh, you can't go, you can't go wrong with that at all. Like keep him as your foundation and stay rooted 
in the word of God, the word of God is always going to get you through. Now, you touched on this a little bit when you were answering some of the other questions I asked, but how important, like, especially in the time of overcoming your depression, how important was discipleship to you, bro? Like discipleship and having somebody accountable. I know you touched on it a little bit, but if we could just dive a little deeper into that from your point of view. Oh, it was super necessary. Super necessary. I feel like, um, shout out my boy Fire, man. My boy Fire, he's, he's the OG to me. That's my boy. That's my boy forever. And um, most recent, yeah, most recent dealing with my depression um, last year. I would call him, he would call me, check up on me, keep me accountable. Hey, how you doing, my boy? How you how how you feeling today? Uh, I'm gonna be praying for you. I remember those times, and I, I don't I don't mind sharing this because we need to share these vulnerable moments. Right. Um, I remember calling fire, bro. So hurt, bro, so lost. And I'm like, bro, what do I do, bro? Like, I don't know what to do anymore. I've been praying. I've been fasting. <laughs> it's just like, bro, what do I do? And he's like, bro, we got to keep praying. We got to keep praying. And he stuck with me, bro, along with other brothers, too, yeah. um, that, that were there for me. Kaz being one of them, he, he would pick me up sometimes. We'll go fellowship, chill, get me out the house. So I think what, to answer your question, the accountability of your brotherhood is very necessary, bro. Um, and I want to say thank you openly to not only Fire, but to the rest of my brothers in faith that that held me up, bro. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a not, it's like a brotherhood, but it's more of a form of like real soldiers, bro. Like when you're in the battlefield and you're hurt, you're gonna pick your brother up. Yeah. If he's wounded and he can't walk, you're gonna put him on, you're gonna put him on your shoulders and you're gonna you're gonna pick him up, bro. And then let him know that, you know. And shout, shout out to Fire, too, you know what I'm saying, on a personal level. I reached out to him here recently, and I was in a down moment, bro. Like, I was like, man, he's going to think I'm a weirdo. But, you know what I'm saying, that was that was who I called. And, man, the, the text messages were flooded, bro, on my phone with nothing but support, you know what I'm saying, from a lot of brothers that it's like, wow, bro, y'all come together, bro, when it's more than music. I mean, I'm still dumbfounded by it. I tell my wife all the time, like, bro, the way they, that y'all came together and just – lifted me up man you know i get that from my church but to see that outside the church like people that y'all really put ministry first you know what i'm saying and it, is. it means a lot bro like i told you the other day y'all come from a different club you come from a different club bro. not not too many out there will do that for for somebody well that i know you know what i mean and yeah, just, yeah. go ahead no nah, i'm saying it's just important bro i i agree with you um not too many people do have that but um when i say Man, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, bro. Yeah. And so with, I know that you, my brother. With you, it's, I have to, I'm like, I'm going to call him because I never know when you're playing and when you're not. <laughs> I play around a lot, bro. So Shout out you, VIC. I play with him a lot too. Because a lot of people that, that do ministry, they, I'm not going to say, <laughs> I don't know on any of them, but I've heard a few of them lack the sense of humor side of, of being, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just all serious. So how do you keep that sense of humor without being like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, one thing about that, bro, is I know that I can't play with everybody. Okay. So so I know for a fact, bro, there's certain people in my circle that I know I can, bet, I can play with, mess with, and there's some people that I can't. And so um, it's just one of those deals, bro. You gotta, um, you gotta have boundaries. Yeah. You got to have boundaries. You got to have a filter because some people do get hurt in the process of playing around. You might say something that you, you don't think is serious at all. He might be like, oh, dang, bro. Really? Yeah. My, right. my feelings were hurt. I, I got a security team coming with me on the 29th because uh, <laughs> y'all want to fight me. <laughs> hey man hey what's crazy is i really meant that bro <laughs> <laughs> hey uh D dj overdose said ask him about his british twin what's up what's the backstory on that oh well you know um there's times that um well because i'm from the uk bro and um this is my accent <laughs> this is how i really talk but um you know since I've been in America and the States, I've changed it up, switched it up and, um, you know, keep it more formal, if you will. 
<laughs> hey, man, you know who threw me through a loop like that, bro? Uh, I don't know if you watched that show All American or not, but uh, there's there's no. a, the main character, bro. He's he's portrays a Crenshaw dude, right from LA. Yeah, yeah. Go, go look at it when you get a chance. He actually has an accent, bro. That's throw. I don't right. watch rated R movies, bro, but I'll check it out. <laughs> Keep it PG. Watch Disney. Buffa, buffa. I don't want to lead you astray, bro. Uh, <laughs> nah, but so I did hear this rumor, man, that we got to bring up on the on the podcast, man. Is Uh-oh. that you? You got a lot of songs that you keep in your vault, man, and and they're not released, bro. What's up with that, man? Unreleased music. Yeah. Hey, you know what? That's crazy, man. I got so many, so many songs with so many different artists, but um, I don't intentionally do that. I just feel like. Um, I'm my biggest critic, bro. And I hate that about myself. Well, I don't hate, you know, I don't want to use that term. Yeah, that's a strong but word. I strongly dislike that I am a huge critic of my own music because I put out songs that I have to have perfectly, you know, before putting them out. If not, I won't be satisfied. And I feel like I let myself down and other people. So yeah. it's just one of those, it was, it's a blessing and a curse. You know, who said it's because they're not auto tuned yet? Who said that? Mo. Shout out to Mo. Shout out, hey, <laughs> Mo. What's up, boy? Hey, I got a song with Mo. I'm about to show them right now. I'm about to yes. put your ass on the big speaks. Exclusive. Literally. Yeah, exclusive. <laughs> you know. So when when uh, my, let's go to my next question. How important is submission to you, bro? To be submitted to a church, to be submitted under a pastor. You know what I'm saying? With yeah, you gotta have you gotta be grounded in the church. What's your view on on submission, bro? I think it's important, just like any other, you know, aspect of your life with uh, with Christ. Um, <clears throat> don't neglect the assemblies of the um, of the church. Don't accept. Don't. Oh. So I feel like there's there's certain scriptures that validate accountability and um, being submitted um, under a certain authority that that we have to. Well, first and foremost, bro, submit yourself unto God, bro. Right. Um, church is important and a lot of people might disagree with me, but, um, I feel like you should, you should visit church, different churches until you finally feel where you are good yeah, at, definitely. um, cause people go to a church, they like something about it and then they just feel comfortable and then they just end up being a seat warmer. Right. They're not active in the church in the body and nothing wrong with that. If you want to play the background, fine. But we should always have the intention of wanting to go to a body, a, a church and be a part of something. You know what I mean? More than just being showing up on Sundays. Um, now, now, I do got a question because I seen in the comments that you got. And now if I chop this word up, I apologize. But I think they say you got some corridos in in the in the vault yeah Do I, oh v v said he got v. some rock songs r&b country songs man <laughs> i don't know about that got a lot in the vault. i don't know about all that but i know that i got a few uh mixed culture songs a few genres that that i like to um that i'm eventually gonna show um not no country i can't touch on that but um but definitely um, some rock music, bro. I, I've always been a fan of rock, alternative rock, yeah, and things of that nature. So I, I got some songs, bro. I, I, I got to see how you play that in, cause I seen a lot. Of, I see your hooks, but I don't see it like rock type of. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're not like rock, like where I'm just screaming on there the whole time. Um, it's kind of like a mix of melodic. Have you heard the term melodic music? Nah, break it down for me. So melodic music is, okay, well, let me just give you an example, like, of an artist that's super melodic. Like, um, who's, a, who's an artist that I could use that, that's not secular? I want to use a Christian artist, but, hey, I don't know any really. Hovey, have you heard of Hovey? Yeah, 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 I heard him. All right, so Hobie is super melodic. Like he he harmonizes most of the time in his songs, and he'll mix it up, put some rap in there. So that's that's what a lot of it is. It's like that. So I, I hear that you got some reggaeton coming out, and Bad Bunny ain't got nothing on Cortez. Got those Papo. 
Man, V cutting up here. I thought it was gonna be V I C, but it's your wife cutting up today. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what, bro? I got V I C on a few songs, and um, that dude right there is um, he challenges me a lot, bro. Yeah, I'm a big fan of V I C's music. To be honest with you, uh, I used to chop it up with him a lot when he used to go fishing and stuff. I used to chop it up with him back because I met, I actually met the World Rejects when I was attending the church out there in Houston on the east side. Uh, shout out to um, Spirit of Life. I was going out there and they went to a youth event called the Boiling Point thrown by Trey Cosmos. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but that's when no. they came out there and I got to see, it was four of them at the time. And uh, I got to see all of them. That's when I met VIC and uh, we got to chop it up a little bit. Man, I'm going to let you down. I'm going to say something that's probably going to hurt me. Oh man, what is it? I, it's sad to say because you just mentioned the whole, you know, reggaeton and the, the Spanish culture, bro. But I am not fluent, bro. I am not I'm fluent. No, I'm not. I, I I mean, my wife, she she's fluent in Spanish. She's Puerto Rican, by the way. Spanish. The only thing I can do is complete my order for taco. Hey, yeah, I'm fluent. <laughs> I'm fluent in food. Um, but when it comes to Spanish, bro, I'm like super whitish, super like, I don't know, really. Uh, but BIC helps me a lot in that area when it when it comes to music. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get BIC on here to help me out with an interview, man. Uh, there's this one dude that I want to get on here. Uh, I think his name is I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's like Tyler or something like that. He went to you remember he was there at that that night that uh at the Glow in the Dark event at Crux Ministry. Uh, he's from I think he's from Puerto Rico too, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to get him on her, but there's a language barrier. I can't really oh because he doesn't really know english yeah and i don't really know spanish so oh, that's why i'm so, trying so to get so you, you a little washed up like me yeah oh i'm, I'm fully whited out that's just like i can't say <laughs> nothing bro there's nothing i'll be able to get out but i'm gonna get dos, dos, dos tres tacos de pastor. oh yeah i know how to say all that charro beans all that but i can't i can't get nothing else out so you have have you been you've been on tour and stuff like that or you you just you know what i'm saying what kind yeah. of stuff have you seen while you, while you were out there, bro? As far as you know, what I'm saying warfare, spiritual warfare. As far as you know, what I'm saying when you do altar calls and stuff like that. What's the biggest thing that stood out, like been out there for you, as far as that, like warfare, spiritual warfare? I know a lot of people use the word revival in a not in a bad way, but they abuse that word. <clears throat> they just say revival, but it's not revival, bro. Right. But when I was out there doing shows on tour, bro, I seen a lot of move. I, I seen the, the hand of God move. And I can honestly say it felt like revival, bro, was happening. And I seen crowds of people, bro, crowds. And not just like, not just like 10, 20 people, we're talking about hundreds. Hundreds of people, bro, coming to God. And that was like one of the best experiences that I had. Um, matter of fact, bro, one of the biggest crowds that I had, bro, that I was in front of, that I was blessed to be in front of was in South by Southwest in like 2015, 2016. And uh, Fire was there actually, bro. This was like when I first met him. Wow. I first kind of really low key met Fire. I got introduced to him. And, um, you know, these these concerts at South by Southwest, they're pretty big, bro. I've never and, been there. Not even yeah, when I was Yeah, there. over there in Austin, bro. Go. Uh, they, they usually hold them, but because of COVID, I'm not sure. Right. <clears throat> if they're going to be doing it this year. I or, didn't even know that there was there was Christian events out there. I thought it was just like a se uh, secular event. Oh, nah, bro. It was, hey, the, the Christian events are bigger than the secular events, bro. And that's not... Oh, yeah, bro. It, they get better. You know why, though, right? Mm -mm. Because unity. Right. It's not It's not about one artist being bigger than the other. It's, it's, it's uh, imagine a group of men and women coming together under one accord, using their platform to, to, to glorify God, bro, to push the kingdom. And imagine that under one roof. So you have literally um, 50 to 60 different artists, bro. Dang. You so know, how, what's the length of those events? Like, I mean, you got uh, you got that many artists. That's a lot of stage time. 
Well, no, now we're not talking about. See, this this is a uh, this is progresses over a few like three or four days. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's not just one night. You got literally like I, that was one of the tours that I was on. That okay. it, it was like three or four nights, and you have a chain of artists in different different uh, times and, and days. Okay. Yeah. So personally, now I, you say you were on the road and stuff like that. Personally, in your life what kind of spiritual warfare have you ever encountered in your personal life? You ever seen anything that just had that Jesus just blew your mind? Like good in a good way? Uh, both. Or like persecution? Not persecution. I'm talking like deliverance matter. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't see the hand of God move in people's life or in your own I've life. Seen, I've seen families be totally transformed and where families were broken, marriages were broken, bro and got restored like that. Wow. Where people were completely healed, bro. I'm not gonna lie and sit here and be like, oh, I seen the blind and, you know, or I seen somebody that was handicapped walk for the first yeah. time. Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna say that, but I did see a lot of things where a lot of healing and restoration took place where I know God was really elevated in that moment. And um, prayer is important, like I said, from the, from the beginning. Yeah. And when you got when you got that many people, bro, praying and you got, you know, the whole atmosphere of God has just shifted and changed. And um, and when God, the Holy Spirit is in there, bro, I'm probably like I'm talking about it's heavy, bro. It's so heavy. It's overwhelming, bro. I see people just laid out crying, bro. People getting delivered, healed, bro. Talking about straight gangbanger dudes bro tatted up from their head to their feet bro all the way just got out of prison type of thing giving their hands up <clears throat> giving this up to god bro crying and i've seen that type of stuff on a regular basis bro and that's just to show you like the power of god bro right and now you know you can't put god in a box come on now you can't put him in a box and say oh He's only for a specific crowd. Nah, bro, God's for everybody. And, and, you know, I look at the big picture and I see, you know, the potential of what we can do as an individual and together. And we can impact a lot. We can impact the world. We can dent, make our dent in this world if we really just, uh, we really want to and focus on Christ. Now, what, I should have asked this at the beginning, but I'm going to dial back. Uh, why Young Cortez? I'm not young anymore. That's what I'm saying. Like, why, why young? I, I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people. <laughs> That's why I said. That's why I said my first diss track is going to be young Cortez, not young. So not, not so young no more. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of people give me grief about it, man. Um, I'm probably going to have to change my name pretty soon. But aside from that, uh, young Cortez is really kind of just was a name that I just came up out of nowhere. It was just organic. Um, I just that Cortez is my last name, so yeah. I just slap young in front of it one day. Young young I'm making music. Yeah, so I was like, man, I'm just young Cortez, man. YC, you know what I mean? They they um most of my partners, they call me Tez. They okay. just call me Tez. So, so that's that's the shift. That's gonna be the shift. Or it's just gonna be Cortez. It, it might just uh, you know what, bro? Since we're on this topic. I had a pastor walk up to me and um, he wasn't dissing me or nothing, but he was like, why don't you just change your name? I mean, no, he said, why don't you just, instead of young Cortez, why don't you just be Gabriel Cortez? Man. He's like, just represent the name that God gave you, brother. Right. And I was like, hmm, I think about it, pastor. <laughs> Let me think so, about it, pastor. So now once... Now you you said about South by what is it South by Southwest right? Yeah, you said no, it's so big because of the unity. What's what's your view on the unity in CHH right now, bro? Like how can how can CHH be better as far as coming together? I think it's beautiful, bro. I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna start with the because there's always gonna be gaps and there's always gonna be certain things conflict and certain things that you can always nitpick at certain things to make them 
take the negative out, you know what I mean? Right. But for me, a positive side of it all, bro, is just, it's, it's, um, we definitely don't have an issue with that. I don't have an issue with, with unity at all, bro. I feel like the body of Christ should always be unified. Um, and then, you know, you always got certain people, certain, you know, I don't even got to call bad seeds. I just want to say that there's certain people that have conflict with certain artists and it causes kind of a division. It causes a gap between the, the, the bridge and it just causes conflict. And, but aside from that, I think it's, I think it's beautiful. I think um, there's a lot of soldiers that we got, not just the rejects, but you got Crisis King. You got, um, Shout out you got King. yeah, you, you, you got Drip Day One, which, which is the homie Kaz. You got um, so many different artists, uh, so many different ministries that do unify, do come together. And shout out to homie Kool-Aid. Um, actually, this is a perfect example of unif unification, um, is, is coming together for this benefit concert for Kool-Aid. Nice. You got so many different cultures of artists coming together, glorifying God, not for our purpose, but for the purpose of the kingdom and right. for a bigger purpose other than ourselves, bro. Right. So, so to me, so to me, when you ask me, about unity, bro. There is no, there is no unit, there is no issue with unity because um, anybody who has a conflict with it, just pull up to the, pull up to the concert. Um, what's the date? 20, on the 29th. Uh, it's going to be on the 29th. 29th, 29th bro. There's going to be plenty of un unity right there on that day in Jesus' mighty name where you can pull up yeah. and, you know, we're, we're going to be um, under one accord like it should be. Right. It's on the 29th at Crux Ministry. I don't know the address right off the top of my head, but yeah, it's, I know, I know it's in Pasadena. Yeah. And it's 29th. Doors open at four, but the concert starts at five, man. And uh, yeah, y'all come out. We'll be out there. I, I think it was pretty awesome the way I seen everybody just I seen everybody that's going to be there. And I was like, man, that's almost more than half of the CHH out here in Houston. Yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty cool. It's pretty dope how everybody came together. So yes, what's, what's upcoming for, for Young Cortez, man? What, what you got coming out? As far as music? Yeah. Oh, you got movies coming out or what? I got a movie. HBO. Man, I'm, I'm going to have to go borrow and, uh, matter of fact, I Matter of fact, yeah, nah, I didn't sign the deal with HBO. I, I, it went straight to Netflix. Oh, man, you should with the stars, bro. I heard that's where it's at. You see? Nah, I went, nah Netflix, the check is bigger. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they caught me a pretty good chance. No money now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Uh, music. I'm always doing new, new music, bro. Um, always putting out new drops. And um, matter of fact, bro, I'm excited. I'm super excited about this new song I got with. Uh, I got. I'm gonna name like three artists that I'm okay. doing. Uh, um, I got. I got one with no excuse. He's a younger cat. He's, he's going to be at the event too, ain't it? I ain't never heard he's his gonna, music. I'm going to check him out. Yeah, check him out. He's going to be at the event. I got a song that I just uh, finished with him. Um, it's kind of still in the works. It's getting mixed and mastered, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be releasing that pretty soon. I got one uh, with Fire um, and uh, the big homie Pun. Come on. Um, so, I, okay, so you, you heard of God City, right? Yeah. And you heard of what you think, right? Mm -hmm. okay so this is like this is like that but god city part two this is like a, yeah, a hold up. yeah yeah bro Girls, we, the, the hook is crazy fires verse is like ridiculous uh pun i haven't heard his verse yet he, he's still gonna in that process but he I already can't wait to me, hear that hook yeah he gave me the green light he was like hey i love the song i'm, I'm gonna do my verse boom so that's in the works we got that, that coming he reached out to me too. We're supposed to be locking in a day pretty soon. Yeah, bro. Lock in with that man. He bro, he could talk to you about music for days, bro. Like he got his he's catalog. And an artist, right? Bro, yeah. He just dropped that. He just dropped the album. Yeah, uh, against um, all against the, the odds or against all odds. Somebody like yeah, bro. His catalog is ridiculous. Bro, he makes he makes my catalog look like I don't know, bro. Like but your catalog is all in your book. Well. But aside from that, <laughs> even though, look, even aside from that, that dude is a vet. That dude's a vet in the game, bro. He's been doing this. But 
Uh, my third song that I'm dropping is uh, with the homie Kaz uh, Castro. We got a we got a, call, a song called um, uh, what is it called? Oh man, man, got him on the spot. What's the song called? I know he's all like right, Castro. I don't know the song uh, title right off the top of my head. Um, all for you. It's called All for You. Basically, it, it's um, uh, I don't. You can visit his page, bro. He he drops little hints of the song and yeah, and, all for um, you. And I'm on the hook. He's on two, both verses, and it's a beautiful song, bro. It's it's um, Thank it's, it's getting finished up right now. So, um, the the cover art is beautiful. Uh, the song in general is awesome. Y'all might even uh, get a sneak peek of it uh, really soon. So, yeah. so I heard you play the guitar. Maybe we can get a sneak peek of that or what? <laughs> I only play the guitar <laughs> for my wife, bro. She said you. She said get get him to play the guitar on live. I only play for my wife, bro. Oh man, man. Listen, we could just get a freestyle then. Yeah, man. Um, you know, <laughs> you know what they say about well, I always say about freestyles, the style's not free. E so you know, yeah. I'm gonna drop my I'm gonna drop my cash app. <laughs> Feel free to throw me some 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 cash app and I'll freestyle for you for man. The style ain't free. Now nah, I'm messing with you. Nobody nah, yeah, you. I do got a, I do got a guitar, bro. I, I love playing the guitar. I just not, I'm not active as I should. But so you, there's gonna be some songs with the guitar in the future. And you know, you know, it's crazy you mentioned that because I eventually wanna, I wanna trans, um, I wanna like, I wanna shift from just rapping to all worship and just play on it. I know you're getting some crazy comments. That's why you're laughing. <laughs> she what? said, at least play your clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who is that, bro? It's your wife. She cut it up. B.I.C. ain't cut up today. It's your wife. Yo, I, 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 hey, for the record, I do not own a clarinet, bro. <laughs> I do not own a clarinet. You need to stop, bro. <laughs> it's, it's funny, man. Uh, He's tripping. Hey, block her. <laughs> uh cool says the dream is to make a cool make a hit with cortez but every time i call him he sends me a voicemail heaven oh man nah. cool. relate on that i barely got a phone i barely got a call back like yesterday i've been calling that's him for a lie. that's a lie bro i'm gonna screenshot our messages <laughs> because so, he, yeah he's 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 not telling the truth so cool's cool's an artist too or what Cool is the OG man. He he's the one that 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 started the rejects with with fire. Um, man, just a little background on that. Um, he he was one of the um, the guys who just started and, and initiated it um, and made it what it is today. So without cool, uh, without fire, there wouldn't have been no rejects, man. I heard cool was a movie producer with the iPhone. He is, bro. That boy, that boy is a fool with it. Yeah, he's, see, the, uh, he's the one that co-shot the um the recent video with the twins. City City Light, yeah. I, I got Lights, to see, got to meet him that night at the at the music video. I ain't yep. never seen him for that day. Yeah, man, I'm I'm gonna put it out there like this, bro. Cool is essential to the rejects. He is a very um he is a very you know predominant you know uh, one of the main reasons why we're active and why we are what we are today, bro. So I know I just came in, a, I just became a reject maybe, um, when was it, 2019? Yeah. So what you makes know. you go with the rejects and not just stay independent? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I feel like everything that we, everything that happened was all organic, bro. It was all just because of a relationship that I had with fire and it started like that. It was really just one of those brotherhoods. We were just homies. And, um, you know, I moved to the H, I got married. Um, shout out to V Marie, we got married. We had uh, 10 kids and- <laughs> Man, <it's> not... <laughs> hold up. <laughs> no, we hey, have- Drop kids, that cash up. Anything to help man, for real. <laughs> Yo, we got 10 <laughs> kids, bro. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> nah, we, uh, nah, I did, uh, all jokes aside, bro, we, we, I moved to Houston, got married to V, um, started my life, and then 
music wasn't really a priority to me, priority to me. It just kind of happened over time. And I started to kind of get myself back in the in the mold. And um it was it was really God City, the song that really uh planted us, because I wasn't even, I don't even think I was BJX right there. Oh, I'm lying. I'm lying. It was what you think, what you think was first. Right. It was it was that song that kind of low-key uh started it with Crazy Chris. And then um it just was like happened organically, bro. And then boom, you know, one thing to the next. And we built we we built it off of that. And uh I'm glad it happened that way, bro, because I think it's kind of like not cheesy, but it's just like uh when you kind of force the door to be open, man, it just, you know, it could kind of end good when it sometimes it won't, you know what I mean? So I'm glad it happened the way God wanted it to happen. So being being married, bro, and then doing music, you know. I know you did music before you were married. Is it is there any difficulty in trying to balance it out while you're married? I mean, there's always going to be like because you have to be, you have to have balance in every area, not just just music. You know what I mean? Uh, I think as long as you create that foundation with your your wife first and <clears throat> your marriage first, keep that a priority. Because I struggled with that. Can I be transparent? Yeah. Uh, me, and, me and V, man, we struggled with that in the beginning. Uh, even sometimes today, we, you know, we'll have our ups and downs like any other relationship. You know, yeah. I mean, we'll struggle. But um, for me, you know, music was always a part of my life. So having that, having that balance and also having that, that filter was hard for me because I didn't know. Right. And you know, marriage was new to me. And so I just knew that it, you know, I needed to let go of my mindset of how I used to treat music. Because obviously I'm not single no more. So right. I have to treat music like it's secondary versus putting that my, as my priority. Come on now. Because I would love to just be on the road right now and be doing shows back to back, bro. And I'm not saying that that's impossible to do in a marriage because it's not. Um, there's plenty of artists that do it. Um, Lecrae being one of them, like, you know, that man stays busy. So uh, I don't think it's impossible. I think just you have to have balance like everything else. You have to balance your marriage. You have to make that your priority, bro. Your, your marriage should always come first. You should always have that rooted strong and, you know, make sure that that, that area is, is solid. So you say you say you got a lot of uh, stuff dropping soon. What's the closest, like, what's the biggest thing coming out soon? You know what I'm saying, that, that you got? You dropping any albums this year? Nah, man, it's crazy. I'm not, because I wanted to put out an album. I really did, bro. I really, because I even talked about it on, uh, and I kind of ate my own words. <laughs> and they kind of teased me about it. Mo teases me about it. He's like, bro, you ain't never dropped the album, bro. And, like, because I mentioned it in the, in the Let's Chop It Up. And, um, but, no, nah, it, it just, you know, God, just didn't want that, you know what I mean? Not not because it was a bad album. It was just because it wanted to have. I wanted it to be certain. I mean, differently. And so now I'm just I'm gonna put out music, you know, here and there, and just single songs here and there. I'm not focused on the album though. <laughs> cool said, Mo, you need to leave my artist alone. V said, cool. Black Sheep. Cool said, uh, Mo needs to leave his artist alone. And then uh Mo man, stop playing. V says sheesh. Well, I guess that's when you said y'all had 10 kids and she dropped the cash app. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Said black sheep. I don't know what she meant by that. But uh oh black sheep is is actually a clothing line that I came out with. Um I haven't put it out yet because it's not re uh, it's not ready to be shown to the world yet oh um, man you ain't got nothing you can show us about black sheep man bro I was, look bro i was trying to find my i have a hoodie a custom that i made um but um nah man i, I haven't really put anything out because i'm waiting um and that's one of those things where i don't even want to call it procrastination i want to call it just i'm a critic of my own self so you I, feel like you stand in your way a lot of times I do, time. bro. I'm my, I'm my worst. I'm my biggest enemy, bro. I promise you I am. And that sucks to even say that. But I want to put it out, but I don't feel like it's not ready. 
Who said Tez and his wife are gonna take a, take the rejects to Puerto Rico when he drops the album? Let's go, dale papo, ya to sabe, mamo de Puerto Rico, dale pow pow. Don't forget about us podcast dudes. Just we're, we're going to in the luggage section. <laughs> Vamos para allá para para comer ta, uh, tatone, todo eso. Mayo what, what, what kind of food? What kind of food Puerto Ricans got? Like what what what's their go to? Bro, um. Man, bro, my wife is gonna kill me. I can't name their like their main dishes right now. I know they eat a lot of pork. They're a lot of pork. Gonna let you have it in a little bit. Yeah, nah. The, I love the rice, bro, because it's not like any other order, no ordinary rice. They got um, they got the um, man. I don't even want to pronounce it wrong. I'm scared to even say it. Um, <laughs> but it's not your ordinary rice, bro. It's not your like, and I'm not trying to diss Mexican rice, but I'm gonna be real, bro. They ain't they ain't messing with you know Puerto Rican rice, bro. So where's some Puerto Rican spots around here or around? Oh man, I'm not even gonna attempt to say that. She said the name in here, but I'm not gonna attempt to say that. Uh, where can we just get try it? Just try it for us. Oh nah, uh, oh nah, I can't. Mm -mm. I'm not even gonna attempt to say that, bro. It's gonna come out so kind of different. What is it stand? What is it stand? It what starts with a G. Arroz con gandule. There you go. I, I hope you said it right because I'm close. Yeah, gandule. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't know, I wasn't even gonna attempt that. Yeah. So, man, what kind of advice do you got, bro? Like, as far as up and coming artists, man, they want to jump into CHH and and do their thing out here. Bro, I think the most important thing that not just an artist but any person in general that wants to like fully be submitted under God to start and make sure that that relationship with Christ is, is, is strong and rooted, bro. I, that, I feel like that is going to be essential. That's going to be key to everything that you do. Um, because if that is strong, bro, you're rooted in God. You keep him first and make sure you're solid in that area, bro. I promise you, you cannot go wrong, bro. Like he will lead you. He will give you discernment. He will give you the tools that you need, bro, to walk. He will guide you, bro. The scripture says that be the lamp to my feet. Guide me, show me, God. You know, there was plenty of times where the disciples were facing persecution in their life, bro. And they always went to God, bro. They always cried out to him. They made him their foundation. They built an altar. They showed themselves to be approved, bro. And God, bro, he said, the Bible says when he can trust you with little, he'll trust you with much. So we have to understand, bro, God is always trying to focus on your relationship with him so that he can open doors for you. And that's the same thing I'm gonna tell any artist that wants to do Christian hip hop. Where do I begin? Where do I start? Bro, root yourself with God, bro. Come on. Now. Give him access to your life. Fully submit yourself when you do that. Can't go wrong. He's going to open doors that no man can shut in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name. Now, I know we're going over an hour, but I, let me just run to this question right quick before we go. I had uh, I had this down, but I forgot to ask. We got caught up in talking. Um, you said on, on Let's Chop It Up, and then you said right now, too, that you was heavy in, in weed smoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was you were smoking all the time. How did you overcome that, bro, and let it go? Did it go just straight cold turkey when you became a believer? Or how did you overcome with that addiction that people that – they struggle with that nowadays. All right. So this is one like this gonna be one of my most transparent moments on this uh this this interview. <clears throat> so I struggled with that since maybe the age of 14. And it just got stronger and it got bigger and bigger. And of course I've tried other drugs, bro, but I'm not gonna get into that. Right. But I will say, as far as weed, bro, I've always had an issue with that in the past. And um, there was moments in my life where, you know, I would tell God, you know, I don't want to do this no more. And then I would I quit cold turkey. Right. Literally, bro, I have like a blunt rolled up. I was going to, you know, blow it. And then I just throw it away and say, God, I'm done. I don't I don't want this no more. And then it would like be like that for like a year, a year or two. And, um, you know, even in my marriage, bro, even in my marriage, like, um, because I've only been married with V for two years, but like before my marriage, 
Like I had an issue with it and she would call me out on that, bro. Like I come to the house smelling like weed sometimes, bro. And this was me trying to be a man of God, right? And this is yeah. me being transparent because um, I'm not that person no more. I don't smoke weed no more. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I believe that I'm fully transformed and healed in, in, in Jesus name. But in those moments, I was, I was weak and I didn't know how to deal with certain, you know, things in my life. So of course I used that drug to numb me, to, to, to cover up what I was feeling, you know what I mean? And I think for a lot of people, they do that, not just with weed, but with pills. Um, and my wife, I don't think she minds me sharing this, but for her, it was pills. Um, mine was weed, hers was pills. She was um, actively, you know, doing that in the past. She was, she was, um, her thing was bars, popping bars, um, you know, or, you know, muscle relaxers, things of that nature. Downers, like super big yeah. downers, you know what I mean? But thank God she's uh, 100% healed, delivered Amen. from that. And thank so I, I want to say that, bro. I want to say that, you know, weed has always tried to sneak in, but I know how to counter and how to maneuver around that. I be around it, bro, a lot sometimes because um i'm a barber bro so i cut hair for a living a lot of my clients do come in smelling like weed bro and my place is not to judge my place is to open a door and show them like you know you're either gonna be you know stuck you know giving yourself and i mentioned this in an interview before you can you can always sway towards giving yourself that numbness but it's a temporary right. fix it's temporary everything weed pills drink to all temporary you're gonna wake up with the same problem bro i promise all right what's permanent is what god gifted us is prayer and uh living water in jesus name come on and uh but man, I appreciate your time, bro. I don't want to take too much of your time. We're already pushing an hour. And I know you, I told you the interview would have been like 45 minutes. That's going to give you more reason to want to fight me on the 29th. <laughs> Y'all stay tuned because I'm going to be running and, and Cortez is going to try to catch me. Um, yeah, man. It was a blessing. <laughs> it was a blessing to be a part of this. Um, man, thank you. thank you for your time. And thank you, man. God bless you. Uh, I salute you and keep pushing, bro. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, if y'all feel led to to just, you know what I'm saying, get plugged into a church or if y'all need prayer or something, reach out to Get Straight to a Podcast in the messenger or message me personally. Um, I know you can message Cortez and he he pray for you too. If y'all need to be plugged into some churches, let us know. We'll get y'all plugged in out here where I'm at. Windsor Glory Church International. We welcome y'all every Sunday and Wednesday. Um, don't hesitate to message us, but thank y'all for tuning yes, in sir. and salute y'all. God bless y'all and stay tuned for the next interview. Amen. In Jesus' name. God bless y'all. God bless y'all.